Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for joining me this week. So this week I'm going to be talking about developing mathematical practices or processes and how to explicitly teach mathematical practices slash processes. So if you're interested in this topic, then please keep on watching. Okay, so today I'm going to be talking about how do we explicitly teach the strategies and skills that make up a mathematical practice or process. And in my research for my book, which is just here, concept-based mathematics, I actually looked at different systems around the world. I looked at uh, the Common Core State Standards. I looked at the Texas uh, Standards as well, the IB Standards, the Australian National Standards, the Hong Kong Standards, the International Baccalaureate Standards. And what these standards all had in common in terms of the processes and practices in mathematics were these big six. And I'm just going to put a diagram here that outlines the six. So I distilled all of the practices from around the world and found that these six processes were what was common in all systems uh, in terms of uh, learning mathematics and looking at procedures and fluency. So you can see that we have problem solving, and I'm just going to have a look at uh, all the other ones, making connections, reasoning and proof, inquiring or investigating, uh, communicating and creating representations. And so we have smaller strategies and skills that actually make up each of these processes that we want to explicitly teach to our students. So even though we implicitly do all of these six processes all the time, we want to highlight one or two per unit that we explicitly teach. So let me share some examples of strategies and skills we can explicitly teach our students to help them with the problem solving process as an example. So examples of strategies and skills include acting it out for problem solving, interpret the question, look for a pattern, change your point of view, identify all possibilities, guess and check, work backwards, write an open sentence, solve a similar or simpler problem, and they're all explicit skills that we can actually teach our students the art of problem solving in mathematics. Now, if I was to look at reasoning and proof, let me just share with you from my book on page 37, what are some of the strategies and skills that we can explicitly teach to our students to help them with the process of reasoning and proof. We can use data to make a conjecture. We can make generalizations, give justification for results, ask our students why, recognize mistakes or flawed reasoning, use a variety of reasoning methods such as self-regulation, logical steps, formulating and testing theories and thinking critically. So we want to be able to explicitly teach reasoning and proof as well as all of the other processes, communicating, making connections, creating representations and investigating or inquiring. Now, these six actually align beautifully with the mathematical practices from the NCTM, but I just want to highlight uh, my opinion about one of the practices that we need to be very careful of, and, as, and that is attend to precision. Now, yes, when we're actually designing uh, products in the world, we need to be very precise because it actually could endanger lives, right? But when we're actually learning mathematics with our students and helping them understand the mathematical concepts, we actually don't want them to attend to precision all the time. We want them to be able to freely explore. We want them to be creative and we want them to make mistakes and learn from those mistakes. And also we want them to go through productive struggle because we know that productive struggle is part of the learning learning process and it's a necessary part. So if we ask our students to constantly attend to precision, they're going to be too afraid to make any mistakes. So I just want to share my opinion and my thoughts about overemphasizing attending to precision in mathematics. So thank you so much again for joining me this week. Uh, I'm going to put a link to the actual processes below so that you can download that graphic. And if you have any questions, please, again, feel free to put a comment in the section below. And I hope to see you next time. Bye.